So one question I get quite a bit when I'm streaming is how do I set up my storage system? So first I'll give you guys a tour of my storage base and then I'll give you a tutorial. So this storage base is my main storage for my survival world and then I also have a storage base in my expert world. Now you don't have to do this, but I recommend having at least one base that's central to the rest of your bases and central to all the biomes so you can have one main place to store all your stuff. Now obviously you don't want to keep everything here, but most of your stuff you want to keep in one place. In my survival world, this is my main storage base. It is what I call the Durport, and it has a garage, an airstrip, and then the building over there, which is the main storage area. All right, so real quick, I'll give you guys an overview of the storage unit, and then I'll kind of go into specifics of what's in each row and then each chest. So this is just a huge square of a building, and in the front area, that's where I have all the chests and shelves set up. And then in the back half, that's where I have the crafting bench and all the other workbenches. Then if we go upstairs, this is actually the fish portion of the storage where it has all 15 of the legendary fish and then all of the storage for the rest of my fish. All right, so that's the basic setup of this storage unit. And then you might notice there are rows of chests. So starting from over here on the right side, we have this first row here. So this row is all for wood. Then within each row, there are these columns of three chests and they're all gonna be for one item each. So in this row for wood, this first column here is for wood and wood only. So all three of these chests here are for wood. Then as we go over from wood, we get to planks. And then again, this whole column is dedicated to planks. Now, as I go through all of these rows, that will remain true. Each column is for one item. So starting from the beginning, we have wood. Then moving over to the side, we have planks and then wooden rods. Then we have knot root, knot root rods, flexwood, flexwood rods, frost pine, and frost pine rods. Then when we go over to this next row, this is all gonna be stone. So same deal as the other row, each column is gonna be for one item. So in this first column, we have granite, and then granite slabs, and then marble, marble slabs, obsidian, obsidian slabs, malachite, malachite slabs, and then here at the end, we have sandstone. So with sandstone, I technically could have added that over here with the marble, but it is a newer item, so I just added it at the end. And then if you noticed a pattern, this is organized in ascending order by rarity. So we got the row for wood, the row for stone, and then here is the row for metal. So this row is a little bit different, but you'll see here why in a second. So this first column is for copper. So not only do I have all three of these chests dedicated to copper bars, but I also have three more chests dedicated to copper bars. And just so you know, not all of these chests are full, but I do plan for a lot of overflow eventually. Then after copper bars, we go to iron, and then we go to iron bars. And just like the copper bars, I have one row for iron bars and a second row for iron bars as well. Then after iron bars is bright core. Now I don't know if that's technically a metal, but it's used to make metal, so I put it in this category. And then again, just like the copper bars and the iron bars, I have two columns of chests dedicated to bright core. Then here at the end, we have glass, and I guess you could put that in with stone or maybe one of the other categories, but again, you make it at the metal smelter with bright core, so I'm putting it in the metal category. Okay, so we got wood, stone, metal, and then this is gems. So this column is for rough amber, and then we got cut amber, rough ruby, cut ruby, rough sapphire, cut sapphire, and then if I had any spare rift shards, I would make a row right here to add the rift shards because I think that would go well in the gem category. I would have more rift shards, however, I have nine villages in this world and I wanted to put a bus station at each of them, so I'm running a little low on rift shards. So these next two rows I actually combine in my expert world storage base, but I'll kind of show you what's in here as well. So on this world, for now, this is literally just batteries and biomass, so like all these chests are dedicated to biomass. Then this row here can be combined with the previous row, but this is the earthy stuff like soil, sand, snow, fertilizer, that kind of thing. Now in this base, this row is pretty much for nothing other than blast powder and dynamite. However, I left myself some room over here in case they release some new items and I always have chest room for them. But again, blast powder can probably be combined with this category. Then the next row over is what I call the animal parts. So this column here is one of the few exceptions to the rule where one column is one item, whereas this column is for brute scales. However, the first chest is for the green ones, second chest for the blue ones, 
third chest for the purple ones, plus the cursed bones. Maybe at some point I'll have more than one chest full of brute scales of each kind, but for now I only really need one for each. So then the next column over is four shells, and then for now, until I need more chests, I'll just keep it to one. However, you never know, there may be a day when we're able to farm these like crazy and we may need more for building and stuff like that, so I'm always leaving my room for expansion. So there's shells, sand shells, blast core, then over to frost shells, then we got wolf claws, sand claws, arctic claws, and bones. Then this row is for fabrics. So I've only got about two chests in each column here, but starting from the beginning, we have silk. Then over to silk thread, then silk fabric. Then I don't have any right now, but then it goes to wool, then wool thread, then wool fabric, then heavy wool, then heavy wool thread. Then the next column over is drawstring. Then the next column is vines, if I had any. And then we have cords. All right, this is the last row besides this area here, which is mostly weapons and charms. But this row right here, I am the most proud of. This is the pantry. So this is another row that is an exception to the rule where each column is one item. This row, each chest is one item. So here, each food in the game has a chest dedicated to it, and then directly across from it, it has a wall mount with that exact food correlating to that chest. So what I mean by that, like if I wanna find cheese, which is right here, that's over here in this row, it's in the middle, which means it's directly across in the middle chest right here. So that works for anything. If I wanna find the pumpkins, that's over here, that's in this row on the bottom, which means it's in this row on the bottom. Now there are a few things like wheat and flour, which cannot actually go on the wall mount, because if you don't know the wall mount, the only things you can put onto it are things that can go into your quick bar. So things like flour and wheat and slurp mushrooms, those actually can't go into your quick bar, so they're not gonna be able to go on here. So for here, I used bread for bread, but then right here, I used bread for flour as well. It kind of just made sense. So over here, I used the slurp juice to identify the slurp juice, but then over here, I used the slurp juice to identify the slurp mushrooms. And they're separated enough where I can kind of always remember which one's which. So this row here is for weapons, tools, charms, stuff like that. And then it's not finished yet, but this is my storage base in my expert world. So this storage base is set up very much the same, but it has some pretty key differences. So for one, the chests are on the wall instead of on shelves. Not only are the chests on the wall, but I also have the workbenches up on the ceiling. This makes it really nice because a lot like my other storage unit, it goes from wood to stone to metal to gems and then so on. So right here, if I need to grind up some stone, that's all here in this chest right here and then I could just throw it up here into the stone breaker. Not only is this convenient, but it's a space saver as well. So another difference between this expert base and my survival storage base is this has all of the storage for the regular items and then I have an entire second building for the food. I guess it's not just for food, it also has my weapons, my Star Wars stuff, and then it also serves as a garage. So in here, I really planned for expansion, whereas in my other base, I have one chest for each food item. So here, I made it so I could have up to three chests per food item. Then, just like my other base, all the food is marked on the wall with the appropriate food. All right, so I think we're ready to head over to Sandbox and start the tutorial. But first, if this was interesting, helpful, or inspiring, be sure to subscribe for more content just like it. And if you guys really like my builds, be sure to check me out live on TikTok and Twitch, where I'm live every day at 4 p.m. Pacific. There, you can ask me questions about specific things you have going on with your build or just tips and tricks in general. And I've been thinking about adding YouTube live to the mix as well. So if you want me to go live on YouTube as well, leave that down in the comments. All right, here we are in my sandbox world where I do all sorts of experiments and testing on top of all my tutorials. So this isn't going to be an exact one-to-one -one, step by step tutorial of my storage base, but I'm going to give you guys the tools to build an organized, efficient storage base. Now, when you're making walls for your storage unit, one thing to keep in mind is some of these walls have these little nubs on them, and they can end up getting in the way of your shelving sometimes. So like here, if I wanted to use the castle walls, there's these 16 by 16s, or I could just go through with 12s and then fill in the other gaps. 
Because as you can see, these 12 pieces don't have any of those nubs. And then again, something like this that's 16 long for the Moss Eisley piece, you can also find the 8 long version of it that does not have nubs on any of the sides. All right, so when it comes to shelving, there's two ways I like to do it. So there's the regular way where you just throw down a chest, then you go to the floor pieces, and really here you can go with any length, it just depends on how long you want your shelf to be. And then what you do is you look at the wall, and in this case, it's red, and that's because it's phasing into the wall. So while we're looking at the wall, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a control that says nudge. On controller, that's going to be your directional pad. On PC, that's going to be the arrow keys. So what we want to do here is use the nudge feature to nudge it towards our character until it turns green like this. And then when we move it around, it's actually touching the surface of the wall and we're able to attach it to the wall. Now, not all walls are created equally. I talked about those nubs earlier, but there are also walls like these Shogun walls that have indentations and can sometimes make it a little tough to find the right spot to attach them. So here, you want to be looking at the part that is sticking out the furthest. So once you have your floor piece nudged over and it's green, so you're able to attach it, that's when you want to go over to the chest and you want to start looking down with your camera until it turns red and that's how you know it's bumping into the chest and then when you look one space up again it's going to turn green and that's where you want to place it then just snap another floor piece to that and make it one more thick and now it's perfect and ready for another chest on top of that and then you can repeat that process as many times as you'd like now do recognize that some chests are taller than others and in this case if you want to stack grand chests three high you will need to build this building at least one and a half tall. What I mean by one and a half tall is this is a standard floor height in this game of one story essentially. And then if you go to the wall pieces and all the way down, there are these half wall pieces. So for a lot of my storage units that I build, I make them one and a half walls high. It also gives you plenty of room so you can put workbenches like this on the ceiling and still have plenty of room. We'll get into that in just a second. First, I'm going to show you how to put the chests on the walls sideways instead of on shelves, if that's what you want. So this works with a thruster, and I also just found out it works with the pressure plate as well. So the key to putting things sideways and upside down is on these two items. Because these items are allowed to tilt sideways and upside down onto whatever surface you need them to, they are going to be our reference point here. What I mean by reference point is we need to look at these items to get the other items to flip to that orientation. So as you can see right here, normally when you aim at the wall with a build, it's just going to stay the right way and it's going to phase into the wall. However, the second you look with your camera at the thruster or the pressure plate, it's going to flip the orientation of that item to match the thruster or the pressure plate. Then one thing you'll notice is as you look further up the thruster, it will come off the wall. And as you look at the base of the thruster, it will go closer to the wall. Here, to place items on the wall, you need to be looking at the base of the thruster. Because if you're looking over here, it's going to be hovering off of the wall and it's not going to be able to make a connection. So what you're going to do is move your camera over slowly until it touches the thruster and turns it sideways. Now, do not move your camera at all. Now, we're going to use the nudge feature. Again, on console, it's going to be your directional pad. and PC, it's going to be arrow keys. And we're going to nudge it around at that point. And you want to nudge it away from that thruster. You see, when it's bumping into the thruster, it's phasing in, and we can't build it there. But as soon as we nudge it away, and again, if it's not turning green after you nudge it away, it might be because you're aiming too high on the thruster. See, as soon as I pull off the base of the thruster, it pulls off the wall. So you need to make sure you're looking as close to the base of the thruster without actually not looking at the thruster because the second you don't look at the thruster the chest comes off that orientation so again look at the base of the thruster it should line up with the wall and then you should be able to nudge it around into your desired spot and then place it now this is a process you'll have to repeat a handful of times depending on how many chests you want on the wall so as you can see it doesn't really save space but it looks really cool but where it really comes in handy is with the workbenches, which again, if you were to look at the ceiling, it's just going to be red, not have any attachment points, and it's going to be right side up. But the second that we look at the base of this thruster, or honestly anywhere near it, but we want to be looking at the base again here, it's going to turn upside down, and then we can nudge it around into a place that we want, and then place it. So now you have access to all these chests, but you also have easy access to the workbench. 
All right, now that we got all that covered, I'm gonna show you an additional way to make shelves like I did in my survival world that kind of saves some pieces and it looks pretty nice. So here we're gonna start with an interior wall and this is just a matter of lining it up in your storage unit. I'm not really gonna worry about lining it up here. So we're gonna place an interior pillar. And again, we want an interior here, not an exterior. Then on top of that, we're just gonna add a half wall. And the reason the first piece we wanted to be interior is because it is one floor space shorter if we were to use an exterior wall and then we tried to put the half wall it would actually be too tall to fit in between here so one interior wall plus one half wall actually is the perfect spacing between the two floor pieces here so once we have that built we're going to build our first chest here like this then on the opposite side we're going to do another chest just like that then we're going to take a 12 by 12 floor piece any will do 12 by 12 though we're gonna look up at this pillar and just like the other shelf, we're gonna nudge it backwards until it turns green so it's not phasing into that pillar. And we're gonna line it up one to the left and then place it. Now that we have that placed, we could just snap more 12 by 12s as far as we need them all the way across. Then just fill in the different spaces with the chests. So obviously everybody is gonna organize things differently so there's no right or wrong answers. Organize the rows in whatever order makes sense to you but hopefully I gave you the tools and the knowledge to at least make yourself a really organized and efficient storage base for yourself. So if that was helpful, be sure to subscribe for even more Lego Fortnite content. And if you're not already supporting a Fortnite creator in the item shop, be sure to use code EPICBRICKS. And like I said earlier, if you have any questions, one, you can leave them down in the comments, but two, I am streaming every day at 4 p.m. Pacific on TikTok and Twitch. So if you ever have any specific questions for me, I'm always there for you.